Hi folks, now we're going to talk about the last chapter in this uh, Biology 250 course. This is chapter 16, the last of the chapters about the neurological system. Talking here about sense organs. Sense organs. We all know that we have a certain number of senses, if you will, that enable us to know what's going on around the rest of our lives here, the rest of our world. Now, in order for this to occur, we must have a sensory receptor. And that is some structure that is specialized to detect a stimulus. Uh, such things as bare nerve endings or receptors for heat, pain, etc. Et um, there's also a sense organ. And this might be a more complex structure. Uh, such as the eye or the ear. The fundamental purpose of any sensory receptor is transduction. That is the changing of one type of energy into another. We all need to be able, or we all desire to be able to respond to light, heat, touch, sound, etc. And then these uh, senses, these forms of energy need to be changed into small bits of uh, e electrical energy so that our nerves can transmit these nerve impulses into the central nervous system uh, and accomplish what we want them to. Now these sensory receptors transmit four types of information. First is the modality, and this refers to the type of stimulus. Vision, hearing, taste, for example, are three different uh, types, three different modalities of senses. Another is location. If we are to sense where pain is, our body wants to know the location of it. Also, thirdly, is intensity. We want to be able to know how intense, how loud is something, how bright is something, um, how much pain are we having. And then fourthly is the duration, how long that a certain stimulus lasts. Now, your author lists on page 581, uh, three different classes of receptors. One is grouping by stimulus modality. And these are thermoreceptors, photoreceptors, nociceptors, chemoreceptors, or mechanical receptors. Another uh, it is by the origin of the stimulus, whether these are externoceptors, internoceptors, or proprioceptors. And then thirdly, there's the distribution of receptors in the body. Uh, two broad classes there are general senses, which are very wild, widely, not wildly, but widely distributed, or special sensors that are limited to the head region uh, and innervated by cranial nerves. Now, let's look at section 16.2, the general senses. Um, look at, oh, never mind, back up. First, we'll look at figure 16.2, which are the different receptors of the general receptors. Uh, you will see an artist's conception of what these look like. Some are free nerve endings. Some are tactile discs, if you will. Some are hair receptors. These are unencapsulated nerve endings. Others are encapsulated. These are all uh, listed in table 16.1 
on page 583. Let's talk briefly about these different kind of senses. First, we'll discuss pain. Pain is a discomfort caused by some sort of tissue injury or noxious stimulation that typically leads to some kind of evasive action on our body's uh, part, but in our body's um, desire to evade this. Um, look at figure 16.3, and this shows the different projection pathways for pain uh, from the tip of our finger all the way to the primary uh, somatic, somatic cortex in the brain, in the cortex of the brain. Then this pain uh, usually stimulates some sort of reaction in the form of a motor uh, impulse that makes our body try to um, remove ourselves from this pain. Okay, section 16.3 are the chemical senses. One is taste, and this begins, this sort sense of taste begins with uh, the taste buds that are located on the tongue. Your author states that there are about 4,000 of them. He discusses the anatomy of the uh, taste buds, or better called the lingual papilla, uh, that respond to taste. And you'll see some better photos of that and pictures in figure 16.6. Our bodies have this uh, ability to sense, there are five different kinds of uh, taste sensations. Sweet, sour, salty, bitty, bitty, bitter, or one that I'll, I'll not, I've never heard before, is called umami, which is kind of a meaty taste. Uh, these are all transmitted, as I mentioned before, via cranial nerves into the brain. The other chemical sense is smell. Another word for smell is olfaction. This is the sense of smell. Our nose is able to react to different um, odorants in the nasal cavity. These are odors uh, that stimulate the olfactory mucosa. Um, these are pictured in figure 16.7. Our body likewise, just like in taste, has the ability uh, to sense many, many different kinds of uh, smells and has the memory that, so that we know if we have smelled something before. Sorry, my my thing on my tell or my uh, beeper on my um, watch is going off here. Sec section th sixteen point four talks about hearing and equilibrium. This, of course, starts from the ear. Um, interesting is figure 16.9 that shows the range of frequencies and loudness that our ears and then our brain is able to respond to. Um, there are certain levels above which we actually sense pain. And then at the lower end is lower part of loudness is the very low threshold of hearing, below which we really can't hear anything. Then there are a wide range of frequencies that re we can respond to. 
our outer ear is strictly there to conduct vibrations into the middle ear or into the um, eardrum, if you will, or the tympanic cavity, cavity of the uh, outer ear. When this tympanic membrane is vibrates, there are the three small bones, the ossicles, that transmit this vibration into the inner ear. The inner ear is very complex and is uh, pretty uh, well above and beyond what I can possibly lecture on. Uh, just so you know that our hearing, as I showed you in that graph, is very specialized. There are small hair cells that can only uh, respond to certain um, frequencies of sound. Okay, that is better shown. These hair cells are better shown in figure 16.13, the anatomy of the cochlea. The cochlea is a shell-like structure in the inner ear that, that has the tiny uh, nerve-ending hair cells. Okay, next I want to briefly talk about equilibrium. The, our body does not like to feel uh, out of control or to be uh, in a state of vertigo when the, we don't know, our brain does not know what's happening to our body. We try to maintain equilibrium, and this means coordination, balance, and orientation of our bodies in three-dimensional space. This is done using the uh, three, trying to turn the page here, um, the semicircular canals or the semicircular ducts that are shown in figure 16.19. These are at right angles to each other and can transmit different impulses into the brain. If you are a pilot, you can know that these three senses uh, or the three different canals uh, can respond to pitch up and down, yaw, twisting, or rolling. Our body does not like these th these types of motions. Uh, figure 16.20 on page 604 shows how these different semicircular canals can be stimulated by this dancer. Figure 16.21 shows how the uh, vestibulocochlear nerve that's part of the eighth uh, cranial nerve transmits the information into the central nervous system so that our brain can respond. Section 16.5 discusses in great detail the sense of vision. Again, I cannot go through this entire uh, part of the text because it is very long and very detailed. Uh, I do want you to know the various parts of anatomy, first of the external area of the orbital region, shown in figure 16.22 and the accessory structures of the orbit shown in section 16.23. Figure 16.24 on page 608 
shows the uh, muscles that coordinate the movement of the eye within the uh, orbital socket, if you will. The eye is a, an extremely complex structure, uh, and its anatomy is shown in detail in figure 16.25 in a sagittal section. Let me just very briefly uh, discuss how our, our vision works. Uh, the, as the eye goes through the uh, cornea, uh, take a look at figure 16.30. You will see the eye going through the cornea and then through the lens of the eye. And it is then focused on the posterior region of the eye called the retina. The retina is covered with uh, the... Uh, vision cones and rods that respond to the different wavelengths of light. Our eye muscles can keep the eye focused on uh, anything that we want it to, shown in six, figure 16.31. We can focus on something in the distance or something up close. Figure 16.35 shows an excellent photomicrograph of the histology of the retina, um, showing the various uh, hair, the, the various uh, cones and rods that stimulate to vision. These are not neurons, but they do. Uh, they are uh, each linked to a neuron uh, that will then transmit the impulses through the optic nerve to the, uh, the, la the part of the brain that deals with vision, which is in the very occipital lobe of the brain. Figure 16.35 shows uh, Excellent photomicrograph again of cones and rods. The cones start with C, and this is how I remember it. Cones sense color, and the rods strictly are for black and white. Okay. As I said, this is extremely complex section. And know that when you get done with this final test, that your course is over. And unless you're going to go into optometry or ophthalmology, uh, you likely will never have to go through this in very much detail again. Figure 16.43 on page 623 shows the visual projection pathway of how the light that enters the eyes uh, stimulates the, in the uh, retina of the eye and then through the optic nerve to the occipital lobe, the visual cortex. And that my friends, is the end of chapter 16. I hope that someone sees this um, and we'll talk a little bit more during final week 16. Thank you.